Now I want to talk about probability distributions. You know what a population distribution looks like. We look at it with histograms or bar charts. But what about a probability distribution? Well, it's very similar. A probability distribution relates the values of a random variable to its probability of occurrence. With the population distributions we looked at, we related the values of a variable, such as class standing, to its proportion of occurrence. With a probability distribution, you relate the values to the probability of occurrence. Probabilities of discrete random variables are listed for each possible value. But it's a little bit different for continuous random variables, we represent probability as areas under a density curve. Therefore, the vertical axis is not really probability, but we call it density. Let me show you what I mean. This can be a probability distribution for a discrete random variable. I don't have any label on the vertical axis. And the label is the only thing that would define this as either a population of values that we're looking at or a probability distribution. If the label said proportion, then we're looking at the proportion of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors at somewhere college, and this is a population. If the vertical axis said probability, then we're looking at the probability of selecting at random a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. You may be thinking to yourself, well, that's basically the same. And if so, good for you, because you remember that when we started talking about probability, that we relate probability to proportion in the long run. Now let's switch to a continuous random variable the distribution of female heights in the United States for females ages 20 to 29. Notice the vertical axis here is defined as density, not probability, but density. Why is that? That's because probability is a slice that comes out of this distribution. We don't talk about the probability of obtaining a value of 60.879321 inches. We talk about the probability of getting between, say, 60 and 62 inches, or between 62 and 65. So probability is represented by the area under this curve. 100% of the area under the curve represents 100% probability of obtaining some height. Looking at 64.1 and below, that would be 50% because that would be the lower half of this curve. So probability in continuous probability distributions is represented not by the vertical axis like it is with discrete, but by area. The vertical axis we call density. An example from a discrete distribution of a probability distribution is that the probability of selecting a member of a particular class from a sampling frame can be given by the bar graph of the sampling frame. And that, in fact, is indeed what we were looking at when we were looking at these bars. So the probability is actually given by the bar graph. Let's take a closer look at probability for a continuous distribution. And for that, I'm going to call up the random selection probability R script if you'd like to follow along. So the first part of this script just creates that plot that we were looking at, which is a probability distribution for heights. Now let's think in terms of finding, for example, the probability of selecting a 20 to 29 year old female at random 
and finding out that the height is between 62 and 64 inches. What would be the probability of selecting at random a 20 to 29 year old United States female and having her be between 62 and 64 inches tall? So that would be 5 foot 2 or 5 foot 4. This is going to look familiar to you. You remember when we did this? When dealing with normal distributions? And there's the complete graph. So all we're doing is representing probability as a slice of this distribution. Probability in a continuous variable is represented by the area of a distribution. Between 62 and 64, I've calculated at the top there that it's about a 26% chance that if you take a female at random that she'll be between 5 foot 2 and 5 foot 4. It's about a 26% chance. Now how did I actually determine that? Remember when we were using P norm to calculate probability? Well, remember that P norm gives us the probability up to a certain value. So I found the probability up to 64 and then subtracted that from that the probability up to 62. And that gives me the probability between 62 and 64. So that's all there is to probability distributions. And given that you went over an assignment in which you looked at normal distributions and calculated probabilities, you were calculating it at the time as proportion, but now we're just switching our thinking to probability. And so you already have experience in doing this.